Hello and welcome back to my Swift tutorial for beginners. This is lesson two. If you missed lesson one, then I highly recommend that you start there first. Now back in lesson one, you learned all about variables and constants and how they're used to keep track of the data in your app. Now the data in your app can be as simple as text or numbers, but it can also be complex such as photo data or maybe employee records in a company database. In Swift, there are different data types to categorize these different kinds of data, and that is today's topic. So let's dive in. So I've got a brand new playground here, and I wanna show you something that I did a little preview for you in the last lesson. So here we have a variable called str, and we've assigned a piece of string data or text data into that variable. And I showed you last time that you're not able to do something like this when you reassign data to a variable. You can't change the data type. Now data types were something that we glossed over in the previous lesson, but that's what we're going to talk about here today. So in Swift, there are different types of data. So far, you've been introduced to strings, which is essentially just text data. And I know that's a little bit of a weird name for text data, but you can think of it as a string of characters. At least that's how I thought of it when I first started. And then int is for integers. Now these represent whole numbers, positive and negative. And then you have your decimal numbers, and you actually have two data types to represent your decimal numbers, where you have float and you have double. The only difference is that double is more precise, so it can actually store uh, longer decimal numbers. And then lastly, for this slide at least, we have Boolean or just bool. And this represents true or false data. It's perfect for data where there is only one of two options. So those aren't the only data types in Swift. However, they're probably the most common that you'll work with for a while. And also when you get a little more advanced, you're going to be able to create your own data types that are more complex than the ones that I just showed you. Just as a quick example, you might create a data type called person, which includes a lot of information like your age, your hair color, your eye color, your ethnicity, your likes and dislikes, and all of that sort of stuff. That's a lot of data, but it's all related to one type, which is a person. So quick example, quick preview, but for now, let's just focus on these common, simple data types. Now what I wanna do is I wanna focus on the practical side of data types. So I'm gonna show you in terms of declaring variables and constants, how you would specify the data type for your variable or constant. So in the last lesson, you learned that in order to declare a variable, you would use the var keyword followed by the variable name. And for constants, you would just use the let keyword. And then you would use the assignment operator, in other words, the equal sign, to assign some sort of data into that variable or constant. Well, one thing that I did leave out was an optional part of this variable or constant declaration. And that is that after your variable or constant name, you can put colon followed by the data type that you expect this variable or constant to keep track of. So in this example, we are assigning some string data to our variable. If I were to explicitly declare that my variable can only hold string data, I would put colon followed by string, which is the data type name. So now let's take a look at our playground again. Why up here in this variable declaration was there no data type specified? Well, that's because you don't really have to do it. Um, if you don't specify the data type, what's going to happen is it's going to take on the data type of the first piece of data that you assign to it. So if my first piece of data was actually an integer, like 100, then my variable str would now be an integer data type variable. So now you can see that this line actually doesn't produce an error because uh, I can reassign data to my variable as long as it's the same data type that it took on in the first place. Now, just a quick note, why is it that if this variable is an int type of variable, why is it that I can't assign a piece of string to it? What's happening under the hood? Well, the thing is different types of data are stored differently in memory. And so when you declare a variable str and you say that it should store integers, 
Well, to put it in simple terms, it's just going to be set up to store integers. If you were to say that that variable would store string data, it's going to be set up a different way. Now there is a data type which gives you more flexibility in terms of storing different kinds of data, but that's a topic for another day. And the second thing is that it actually helps you as a coder, because imagine if your variable can store any kind of data, you don't know what to expect. But the fact that you know this variable str can only store numerical data or integers to be specific, um, that sets your own expectation as a coder. Sometimes having too much freedom is not a good thing because it offers more opportunities for errors. And when we're programming and when we're coding, the greatest enemy is actually us making mistakes, either in our logic or in the way that we've coded something. So that's a little bit about why there are data types. Now let's do some quick examples of some of the data types that we've talked about. So we've got str here. So let's leave this as a string. All right, and let's do, let's do another one called a. I know I'm not following my same rules about having descriptive variables, but uh, you know what? We could do that. Let's call, let's call it an integer and we'll do 100. We'll do a, a float and this could be like a 0 0.1 or 2, this could be double. And you know, I'm not, and you could do var bool. This is the data type for that. And then this can be true or false. And like I mentioned before, you don't have to explicitly specify the data types like this. It's going to take on the data type of the first piece of data that you assign to it. Now this part is a little tricky because float and double both represent decimal numbers. It's just that double is more precise. So if you remove that data type, or well, what kind of data type is float and double, or sorry, these two variables, what are they? Well, it turns out that double is the default decimal data type for Swift. So this one would actually be a double data type. That's what the system is going to treat that as. And then Boolean is just Boolean. If we remove that, it's gonna see true and it's going to make this variable a Boolean type. Okay, so before moving on to the next lesson, let's do a quick recap. In this lesson, you learned about the most common data types that you'll be working with. You also learned that you can explicitly specify the data type when you declare your variable or constant. And if you don't do that, the variable or constant is going to take on the data type of the first piece of data that you assign to it. And in the last lesson, I did forget to mention that I have a Swift cheat sheet available for you to download and reference. So you can have quick access in case you forget the syntax or maybe data types or anything else. And it's very handy to keep beside you as you're learning Swift. Great progress so far. Let's keep moving. I'll see you in lesson three. Just click the thumbnail right over there.